Crisis 3 is out and everybody wants to know how it performs on different systems. Well, you're going to have to wait seven seconds because this is the intro. And we're back. We've got an Asus Direct CU2. This is the 7970. It's a monster. I overclocked this. We've got an Intel 3770K and an Intel 3820. That's an i7 as well. And we also have uh, the AMD FX 8350. Now, what we did for you guys is we tested Crisis 3 um, at 1080p, 1440p with this graphics card on all of those CPUs, and they're all overclocked. And uh, we also tested those with two of these in Crossfire to let you know um, exactly how it performs. Now, why didn't we test the, um, the 3570K, the i5? Well, the 8-core beats it, barely beats it, um, and it competes better with the i7 parts. All right, let's talk about the systems. The Intel Z77 system, you're using this motherboard because I quite enjoy the overclocking features and uh, also like a lot of the other features like Fan Expert and stuff like that. This is the uh, Asus P8Z77V Pro. So we have this one for the Intel. Now for the AMD, we've almost got the exact same motherboard. It's a 990FX-based motherboard, the Asus M5A99FX Revision 2. So we're using that one um, for the AMD. The rest of the system, like I said, we have one and two of these 7970s in there. Uh, we have 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz Kingston Beast RAM running at 2133 on both systems. We've got a Kingston HyperX 3K and 120 gigabyte SSD on both systems. Uh, Seasonic 850 watt gold certified power supply. We got an H100 on the Intel system and an H80 on the AMD based system. So the overclocks for the AMD, we took it to 4.6 gigahertz and the Intel, we took it to 4.5 gigahertz. We didn't go any crazier than that because that's pretty much what you can do by clicking auto. Just click auto and you're done. With the Asus Z77, I just went in and changed the uh, multiplier to uh, 45, and then I went down to the voltage and just clicked on auto and just let Asus do everything for, for me. Uh, we're going to be doing a full overclocking tutorial on that motherboard, so stay tuned for that. Now, for the overclock on the graphics cards, you know, we did, we did this overclock because if you get this thing and you do not overclock it, you're crazy. Uh, we used the Asus GPU tweak program, uh, extremely simple to use, and I just raised it from a 1000 megahertz to 1125 because anybody can do that. Um, and, and get a stable clock with this. It, it just works. And I raised the uh, memory clock up to uh, 6,000. So that's what we have going on with this. It's really freaking easy. And uh, there'll be a tutorial on overclocking this card coming this week as well. So it's just, it's really easy. I don't even know why you guys need a tutorial, but I do want to show off uh, some of the things that you can do with the software. Are we ready for benchmarks? Good Lord, there's too much information. You have to freaking qualify everything you say. We benchmarked everything with identical settings across all systems, and we did the exact same benchmarks, neck beards. Oh, by the way, we also benchmarked Far Cry 3 again with and without the filters, just for you guys, because we haven't done it with the 3770K. So let's get right down to it and take a look at um, this game. Now, first off, I tested things at the max setting with all filters, all anti-aliasing turned all the way up, etc., etc., and I tested things without the filters, because there's, you know, sometimes one CPU will run better with, with and without the filters. So... Starting off the 3770K versus the 8350, Crisis 3 at 1080p, you can see that the 37.7 barely beats it. it uh, it's 21.08 versus 20 frames per second. I also threw in mine, um, the 3820 got 21.6 frames per second, so a tiny bit faster, and that one's overclocked to 4.6. I only did a couple benchmarks with that one, just two, but I wanted to throw that one in there as well. At 1440p with max settings, uh, the 3770K is at 13.68 frames per second, and the AMD 8350 is at 13.28 frames per second. So the scores are so close, guys. It's almost ridiculous. It makes me feel like there's a bottleneck somewhere else in the system, but the systems are almost identical all the way, all the way down. Now, Crisis 3 with no filters on the um, Intel 3770K running at 1080p, it's like 2.5 frames per second faster than the 8350, so it's a little bit faster there, but not anything to call your friends about. And then at 1440p... We've got 23.56 versus 22.12, so again, virtually virtually the same score. So overall, we've got a tiny advantage for the, uh, for the more expensive i7, like a very small one. So we see that. Now let's talk about Crossfire, shall we? I'm running at max 1080p on the i7, 36.72 frames per second, and on the 8350, 36.04 frames per second. At 1440p, uh, the scores, you guys are not even going to believe this, but the scores are absolutely identical at 23.52. So, um, yeah, with two of these graphics cards in the system running 1440p max, it's identical down to the 100th 
of a uh, frame per second. What are the chances? With no filters, the Intel pulls ahead by just a little bit. 1080p, 59.64. Um, 8350 was 56.76. And at 1440p, we have 40.48 on the Intel and um, 39.52 on the 8350. So the scores are still very, very similar. Far Cry is also kind of new. So uh, while we're putting things head to head, we may as well include Far Cry in this video. So Far Cry, 1080p. The, uh, the AMD wins at 1080p. It's 36.2 versus 36.44. So the AMD is barely winning. And at 1440p, uh, 24.68 versus 25.52 for the AMD. Very slight win there. And that's with all the filters turned on. Now we turn the filters off and the Intel's ahead. So with no filters, 59.72 versus 55.24 at 1080p. Uh, Intel barely winning. And then at 1440p, 44.52 versus 44.2. Again, the Intel barely winning without the filters on. Crossfire. Yo, get caught up in the crossfire. To the Asus DirectCU2 uh, 7970s in crossfire with Far Cry 3. 1080p, it seems like the Intel is doing a much better job at scaling there. You can see it's 76.68 versus 53.12. So really just kills the AMD when in, in crossfire at 1080p. Uh, the difference is less at 1440p. It's like 44.12 versus 42.08, so very, very small difference there. But um, it looks like we have less of a bottleneck or there's more optimization for the Intel. I'm not sure what, but it really did kill it at 1080p. All right, without the filters turned on, we have uh, 1080p on the Intel at 81.56 versus 56.4. Again, it just kills it at 1080p. And then when we crank it up to 1440 with no filters, 64.92 for the Intel and 59.24 uh, for the AMD. So we have some interesting uh, results there. So there's a lot of numbers here. We put the graphs on the screen to give you guys a little better idea of what was going on. And sorry, they're not the fancy high quality graphs. I don't have time to do that right now. I'm more interested in doing the content. So all in all, you can see that the Intel is slightly ahead of the AMD in a lot of the tests, um, especially in Crossfire with Far Cry 3. However, the difference is such that it doesn't make sense. You get more for your money with the 8350. Um, and I know we didn't do these tests in 720p. Now, the only thing that I've seen beat the um, AMD 8350 at 720p has been the uh, Socket 2011 6 core from Intel, which is like a $500 part. So all in all, you do get more for your money uh, with the AMD. And the only reason I would use the Intel is if you're building like a, a machine that needs to do, you know, premiere rendering and that sort of thing as well, or premiere editing. But even then, the AMD is not bad. If you're building a gaming rig, they're both good ways to go. But, um, I mean, the AMD is just more for your money. So, not bad there. And also, this guy's a beast. So, if you're going to be getting a graphics card to overclock, these guys are a beast. I'm having quite a bit of fun with this. You plan around with it a little bit more. It's going to go into our game streaming rig soon. Are you ready for that? So again, guys, you guys can check out um, my full review on this where I benchmark tons of different games with it. Um, and you guys can check out the overview on how to overclock all these different parts and we've got a bunch of asus videos coming up this week i've been playing around with a few asus motherboards and and this thing so um lots of benchmarks and overclocking tutorials and stuff coming your way that's really what i wanted to get into with all this stuff because you can do a lot with it the digi vrm is quite nice anyway hope you guys enjoy crisis 3 i'm actually enjoying it it's better than crisis 2 and uh whatever i mean it's fun bow and arrows are always fun that's the end of the video uh comment and subscribe and whatever it's down there. Bye. Yeah, argue in the comments. Guys, I want you guys to get into the comments, and I want you guys to threaten each other. I want to hear, like, seriously, this is what the internet is for. It's for you to get on here and be like, Intel! Ah! Ah! And then someone else be like, AMD, no! Ah! That's what I want to see. I want to see that, but in in words. I want, then I want you to accuse me of being paid off for this video. Because I really have an agenda and I really care that much. AMD, I sent them a link to the video the last time we did one of these videos. I sent them a link to the video and they didn't even reply. And they're like my friends at AMD. I didn't like send it to the PR link. I was like, hey, friends at AMD that I've, you know, met at different trade shows and hung out, you know, whatever. Didn't even write me back. I hope you guys are watching this right now. Because you guys didn't even write me back and I cried myself to sleep for a week. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.
Alrighty then. My Scottish spins marks are in. I'm so lazy that I do all this work for you guys and you guys complain. I can't. Love that garbage. <laughs>